can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. From the New York Times on February 17th, the Obama administration is planning a decade-long scientific effort to examine the workings of the human brain and to build a comprehensive map of its activity, seeking to do for the brain what the Human Genome Project did for genetics. Hi, I'm Ben. That's Matt behind the camera. That makes this stuff they don't want you to know. The search for the brain, or the soul, I know, it's cheesy, but like, soul is a loaded word, maybe, if you don't care for the religious tent there, uh, maybe think of consciousness or awareness. Anyway, here we go. So the idea is we're going to spend, we being the United States, $300 million a year, roundabout, for at least 10 years. So that's going to be minimum $3 billion over the next decade. And we're going to spend this money to map the brain as completely as we can, as completely as we aim to map the genome, the human genome. So this is a little bit controversial at times. There's supposed to be a solid quantitative basing for this. Uh, according to the administration, the president in the State of the Union said, every dollar we invest to map the human genome returned $140 to our economy. Double dash, every dollar. It's a pretty dramatic speech from what I understand. But people think it's worth the money. Now, what kind of benefits could we see from this? Well, we know that the Human Genome Project uh, definitely benefited some people with rare genetic disorders, and it allowed us to have a much more um, sophisticated understanding of the ways in which our genes interact. So perhaps we'll learn untold secrets of the brain while we uh, spend billions trying to map it. That's all if it works, of course. Now keep in mind that this is different to the uh, Swiss-led effort to build a silicon brain. Yeah, building a fake brain. Just a bunch of zeros and ones, click, 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 click. And it will supposedly be a uh, super brain if it all works out. This is weird because it gets to something that we always think about when we talk about the brain, which is the singularity. If you've listened to some of our shows, well, thank you. And if you've listened to some of our other podcasts, our buddies at Tech Stuff talk about the singularity. Ray Kurzweil, if you're familiar with him, talks about the singularity. Futurists love it. Um, science fiction authors love it too. But what is it? The singularity is that moment when a computer superintelligence emerges and changes the world in ways beyond our comprehension. This is from the MIT Technology Review. So essentially, the, the singularity is this point where we're able to build an artificial intelligence, a real one, not just something like Cleverbot, although Cleverbot is hilarious, and please look him up if you haven't yet. But the idea here is that we'll also find ways to extend human lifespan, to become immortal, or to download personalities, um, or to build copies of brains to such high fidelity that they are indistinguishable from the real thing. Now, if that sounds a little bit snake oilish, a little bit sensational, you're not alone. In fact, uh, top neuroscientist at Duke University, Miguel Nicolelis, is also on the same page. Now, you may recognize this professor from appearances on The Daily Show, or of course, if you research neuroscience, you've heard his name numerous times. Here's his beef with the singularity, for lack of a better word. He says that we will not be able to build a convincing human brain or a convincing artificial version of a human brain because the most important features of the brain are the result of unpredictable non-linear interactions amongst billions of cells. Instead, he believes human beings will increasingly subsume machines, meaning that we're much more likely to have different forms of biotechnology within our bodies going forward, but there will still be a, a human brain in the driver's seat. Now, why are we telling you all this? Well, first, because we're kind of nerdy, and honestly, we, we think it's really exciting. Secondly, because it didn't get into our episodes, uh, and we're moving on to uh, some newer episodes. But, but thirdly, this is, a, this is a huge question. This is a fundamentally human pursuit, one, perhaps one of our defining pursuits. What, what is the nature of the soul? What is the nature of the consciousness? Is it possible that we will be able to map 
the awareness that every human being has, the same way that we've been able to map the passage of veins and arteries, that, that boggles the mind. What are the implications? We don't know. I mean, and even, even the top scientists uh, at this point would have a hard time tracing the implications of a world in which that sort of understanding exists. But yeah, so that is some of the last stuff we wanted to talk about in the human brain. And we've got some questions that we want to hear from you about. But first, we also want to talk about, of course, the next thing. What are we doing next? We really appreciate the feedback we've received about the Deceptive Brain series. And we especially appreciate all the people who took the time to write in and say, hey guys, do some other emotions. I want to know about fear. I want to know about jealousy, uh, happiness, etc." Um, we're going to put Deceptive Brain on a break for right now because we have so much other stuff that we want to talk about. For instance, Roswell, spoiler alert, Libyan rebels <laughs> and their central bank that they set up like a week after taking over. Point being, we're going to be doing some new and exciting stuff and we want you guys to know about it. So instead of just doing one of these videos every week and one of our original videos every Friday, we're going to try to bring a whole week's worth of stuff. And here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna pick a theme, you know, like Bigfoot or cryptozoology or whatever our listeners want to hear more about. And then we're going to spend the whole week trying to get all the information out. So we won't be bound by the typical video formats we've done before. This means a couple of things. One, you're going to see more videos coming from Matt and I in different formats. Two, you're going to see, um, you're gonna have more time to write to us or give us your views and we'll be able to respond theoretically that same week, which would be pretty cool, we think. And then three, hopefully, we will finally be able to walk away from an episode without pages and pages and pages of stuff that we wish we could have worked in. It's maddening. So here's the question. Here, here, here's what we want to know from you. Is this project to map the human brain worth the money? Can we build a working virtual brain? Should we build a working virtual brain? Do you think that it will be possible to map the soul or the consciousness? All right, so please, uh, thanks for watching. As always, uh, we are going to be publishing our Roswell episodes again, back to back, to get you guys ready for uh, part three of Roswell, which will be next week, um, for the whole week. And we wanna hear from you. Uh, please let us know what you think about the brain and the soul, or awareness. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, Conspiracy Stuff, at Twitter, at Conspiracy Stuff. Or, if you're feeling old-fashioned, we love getting mail. You can always send us an email at conspiracy at discovery.com.